Guys, good Friday morning. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith here on the I Love Seville Network. You know what? It's great to connect with you guys. It's glorious. We're above the mud. We're surrounded by friends and family. You, the viewer and listener, have become a part of that inner circle that we call family and friends. And I just love connecting with you through this platform, and I love highlighting Yes Realty Partners and Keller Williams Alliance. I've seen legitimately firsthand what Keith Smith, what Yona Smith, what Yes Realty Partners do for people um, and for our folks looking to buy and sell their houses. It's no easy task selling a home, buying a house, certainly not in this market, but Keith and Yona, maybe Yona, make this process very seamless for their clients. Yes, Realty Partners. Judah Wickhauer is our fabulous director, studio camera, and look at how distinguished. But that's not fair. Keith this is, is totally looking. totally not fair. There's a rule. I'm not supposed to interrupt you during well, your... Well, I am giving your business props. <laughs> during your opening, uh, let's call it a monologue. But when you hit a zinger in the middle of the monologue, how am I supposed to We respond? heard you chuckle. Yeah, we heard, we heard Chuck. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Good morning, Nicholas Erpe. He says good morning to everybody. Hey, Neil, Neil Williamson's hey, watching. Hey, Neil. You want to give him some props? Yeah, I literally just before we went live, I said, you know what? I miss Neil sitting here. We, that was a great show on Friday, a lot of fun. And, and I enjoy it when I can sit back and just relax and, and, and let others kind of kind of shine, which Neil does. And, uh, and I think there was some... Uh, you know, it's just, it's just good stuff. We had a chance to talk about good stuff. But today, you know, this is a deal of choice kind of thing. So, Neil, if you want to kind of stump the chump, which would be me, throw out something, see, see if you can stump me, which is probably not going to take too much. And, uh, and we'll talk a little, bit, uh, a little bit about the market, a little bit about what's going on. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get some case studies thrown at us. I love what this is. We've been doing this all week. Uh, I just feel like the comedy, I'll be here all week kind of thing. <laughs> it's, we will gladly have you here all week. Uh, really? And you know what? I felt like a little, uh, you know, I, I was actually reminiscing and, and thinking of Sir Neil Williamson, the president of the Free Enterprise Forum last night at the school board meeting. Oh, you saw him there? No. Uh, I, I was at a, a meeting. Yeah, Neil it. goes to so many. Yeah. It was at the Admiral County office building. Okay, the beautiful auditorium, which you've gone to so many times. As uh, not so many times, but I've been there enough. You're a stakeholder in the community. You know what? It was empty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it's you know. It's so demoralizing. <laughs> a topic like, dude, like yeah. bus drivers are getting kids to school on time. Yeah. And all the parents, this hits close to home. 6.30 to 11.30. By the time, 6.30 to 11.02. By 11.02, the end of the meeting, I could count on like, two hands and both feet, how many people were in attendance? And I'll bet you a majority of them were staff. Yeah! yeah. That's 100% true. Yeah. yeah that, that, we've been to enough of them. Yeah. yeah. It's staff. And it's, and it's, How'd you know that? How do I know that? Because I've been to a few. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one or two. I was, would, but generally it's... 80% it's, plus were paid employees. Yeah. yeah. It's generally <laughs> staff um, or presenters that are coming in to present something. And, it, and, and this is why... You know, a shout out to Neil and Sean. We Tubbs. love you, Sean Tubbs. Sean Tubbs. Um, you know, th this is why it's so important for what these gentlemen do for us all, because they're there, and you should support them. And 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 I truly mean that. Uh, support them financially the best way you can on that end of it, because they're doing the work that you know. Let's face it. Like, look, you know, we're kicking off on this topic. Let's face. It. What time did you start? Uh, I mean, you started. At 6 I was there at six twenty-seven p.m. And this, it started at seven or six. It started at six thirty. So I was there three minutes early, and it ended legitimately at yeah. eleven o two. But look, look, you're fortunate, right? You're able to do that, right? I'm fortunate. I'm able to do that because of our time and what we do for a living, and so forth and so on. But the average person. You know, is either on their way home to make dinner for the family or whatever, whatever, whatever it is. They don't have the time. When I got home, I ate Honey Nut Cheerios for dinner. My wife and son were asleep. It was it, a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios yeah, for dinner for me. Yeah. I can tell. I can tell where my patience, my wife's patience, is with me attending meetings. Right. So by what's on the by what's on the counter when, when you I get home? home right. right at eleven yeah. o'clock. It's like right. oh. She's pissed. <laughs> there's nothing. Or, hey, there's a nice, you know, she cooked a meal, it's in a plate, it's in the warmer, it's ready to go. And then there raises this whole question. Should you eat at 11? Should you not eat at 11? Would you have eaten the bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios? I've eaten 
honey and nut Cheerios. They're at good. Seven o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an ice cream guy. I'll tend to say, screw it, it's 11 o'clock. Let me get an ice cream and go to bed. But that's just, that's just me. So, but again, a shout out to these two gentlemen, to what they do. It's so important to it. I like to think we help out a little bit here on the show, trying to take some deeper dives into it. But they are there. They're putting in the work. They are the ones that are wearing the, the, the hero hats uh, on a regular, daily, daily basis. Why don't, why don't I do this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tag Sean Tubbs in the post here. Sean Tubbs is good people. Donate to Sean Tubbs, Info Seaville, Town Crier Productions, Charlottesville Subs Community Substack, the Charlottesville Community Engagement Letter. Sean Tubbs, help the man out. And a little bit of Neil. Kind and of Neil Williamson. And he Neil. just shared the link in the feed. Yeah. Neil Williamson, Free Enterprise Forum. Support the man. Support the man. He put the link in the feed. Yeah. yeah. It's it's please please do that. And particularly of uh, the folks that are in our industry, any realtors or lenders or anything like that watching it, you really need to support the, support these folks and, because they're bringing out some good stuff. And then, you know, there's a potential of a mustache being shaved on, <laughs> which is well worth any amount of money oh, no to, doubt. To, uh, to watch. So, look, I, I didn't have too much of a kickoff today. There, there was um, a little Inman article that maybe we can start chatting a little bit about. Uh, Fannie Mac, Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. I can't remember which one. I don't have it up in front of me. David Butler, good morning. Hey, good morning, David. Uh, was pretty much the first time anybody said they're looking at a little bit of a price reduction in 2023, somewhere around a 1.5% um, uh, price reduction. It's always been, hey, appreciation, appreciation, appreciation. This is the first time that we've seen something a little bit on the, on the negative, on the negative side. So I wanted to toss that out there to see what everybody thought about it. Maybe we can take a dive into it. We'd love to. What do you attribute the uh, reduction, housing value reduction headline news to? Yeah, look, it's interest rates went from two or three percent, six, seven, potentially eight percent. Inventory is, uh, it's, it's interesting, I'm, I'm about ready to pull it up. Inventory, inventory is decreasing, but the amount of inventory, in other words, new units coming on, new homes coming on the market versus pending is starting to widen, right? So I'm looking at the last seven days right now, 77 new homes came on the market, uh, 49 went off. This is from Friday of last week until this very moment, moment right now. Uh, I can tell you on a personal level, um, our, uh, I've actually got a whole weekend booked of, of showings with multiple different folks, which is not a normal occurrence, at least it hasn't been for the last uh, months on the end of it. So it and, and when I ask these buyers, well, why are we, why are we, you know, why are we picking up tempo now, right? And there's about six different buyers on that end of it. One is inventories crawled up a little bit. They feel like there's less competition, right? You know, I'm not competing against a bunch of other folks on it. Prices are stabilizing on it, and it's a little bit more normal, right? So it, these are, and these are everything from, I have mo a couple of millennial couples to, you know, ancient people like me. You know, the, 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 the I think technically I'm a young boomer. Yeah, you're a young boomer. You're really? a millennial at heart. No, no, I think technically in the age group, I'm technically a young boomer based on my 62 birth, but 1962 birth, but. So, so I think that's what's going. I think that's what's going on. I think I think you're going to start seeing that changing a little bit on it. What what I don't want to do is is um, you know I don't think this is getting any traction. I don't think we're not. I didn't see it in any mainstream media. I don't know if you have. I have not seen it in mainstream yeah. media. Uh, but uh, I mean, we cut to the chase. Idman is generally uh, ahead of the curve. In you know they all They're are. They're an industry insider yeah, publication. Uh, Risk Media, RIS Media yeah. is, Inman, you know, Housewire, all these folks that I read in, you know, in, on, in the middle of the night when one can't sleep. Right. On that we have that in common as well. Uh, you really? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I sleep, you know, how many hours do you sleep a night? <laughs> how, how many hours of sleep? Con consecutively. Yeah. Without waking up and then going back to bed again. 90 minutes? Uh, on a good day, three hours. Yeah, a good day at three hours. I'm a three to four hour a night guy. Total. Yeah. 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 You know, I I, I was telling my youngest daughter uh, who's expecting. You know, I think you know, um, you know, it was a little bit of a joke. I think 
you should have been uh, having kids when you're in your my age because we're up all the time. So you get up in the middle of the night to do the feed. When you're in your 20s and your 30s, you want to sleep 8 or 12 hours on it. But well, with number two on the way, um, I oh. am the 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. shift. Oh, we've got a schedule. Yeah. Oh, we, my wife is very, uh, <laughs> probably just like Yona. No, uh, no. No, she leaned over to get your ass up. My, my wife is very detail organized oriented, and I'm the 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. guy for the Mrs. feeding. Mrs. Smith is very much so like that. So look, uh, you know, instead of you know, I don't know if how folks are reacting to this potential, re you know, actual. We've got an actual largest lender saying that that's that prices are going to reduce, you know, uh, uh, by 1.5 percent. They're talking about inventory, which is what we've been talking about for a while. Um, they're projecting somewhere between 23, 25 percent. So it's going to be north of 20 percent of number of units sold less. But this is the first time we said, yeah, we're also going to see lower prices too, right? Everything else was inventory was down a little bit. Prices are going to climb a little bit. That was to be expected. But but Don't put you it, think? Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to to put it a little bit in perspective. Okay. If Lake Monticello single family detached. Right. If you would have bought a home in 2017, right, would have cost you median sales price 195. It is now selling for 317. That's a 141 thousand dollar delta. So if you you have an appreciation of 141 thousand, and that does not include your, you know, how much you pay down your mortgage and so forth and so on. Oh, uh, and and you know, it, and if you bought it last year, you got a 47 thousand dollar appreciation. 2020, 82, 1993, 18, 103. If you bought 11 years ago at Lake Monticello, that single family detached home cost you 176,000 and is now worth 317. That's pretty good return on investment. So That's your point. So if 317 drops one and a half point and you bought 11 years ago? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, your point is if you hold, you're gonna do well. That's your but point, that's, right? That, and, and it's interesting. You're, I was reading some back of the uh, back of the system notes and some organizations I'm part of. Um, I think you're going to see in the beginning of the year officially folks saying they're going to be staying in their homes longer than 10 years. I think you're going to see 10 to 12 years is going to be the conversation going on. I know it is when we have conversations with our young buyers in it, like uh, you know, hey, look, I'm going to be in. I, I'm going to be in here for 10 years. So the point is, is if I would have bought in 12 and I sold today, I didn't do the math, but the difference between 176 and 317 is substantial, right? It's a couple hundred grand if I got the math right quickly in my head. So 1%, 1.5%, 2%. Now, if I bought in three, if I bought at 317 in 2022, I've got to have to be in this house for five years. And it'll appreciate three to five percent year over year. It's it's it's. it's Look, here's the point he's making, and, and it's you. a it's a very good point that he's making. If you are going to buy a house, even in today's market with today's interest rates, and today's interest rates for anyone that's watching the program, are a very difficult pill to swallow. Okay, you're likely locking in a rate that's seven percent or more. It's a difficult pill to swallow. But if you hold on to the house and you pay your mortgage, and you pay a little bit on top of your mortgage each month, you're gonna have a piece of property that's gonna appreciate over time because Charlottesville and Central Virginia are coveted places to live. We have the University of Virginia that undoubtedly is insulating us from national trends. Hold the house. Now, if you buy a house today, and you have to sell the house next year, or even two years from yeah, now, most, you're gonna be in a tough spot. Yeah, but, but that, that's under, not everybody. No. It's very few people. Correct. Under normal circumstances. They hold 10 years. To, 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 well, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, to have, if I would have bought in 2021 and I've got to sell now, to have a $47,000 appreciation is not normal. Right. Right. If you hold on to a, if you buy a home and you've got to sell it in one or two years, the best case scenario is you cover your closing costs, which is going to be about six. To ten percent, depending on commissions and you know so forth and so on, somewhere in that range, you will basically break even and move on. If you know, it's just the normal appreciation isn't double digits. 
It's yeah. single it's single digits. But to put it in perspective, if I would have bought in this example of two thousand and twelve, the highest mortgage rate two thousand and twelve, so I'm looking at uh Freddie Mac's um since nineteen seventy one thirty year fixed rate month by month. In two thousand and twelve was three ninety five. Three three roughly call it four percent. Four percent mortgage at okay. that at that point. If you would have bought in seventeen your highest was about four and a quarter, four and a half, somewhere in that line. There was a couple of months that it flirted, flirted with that. So, look, uh, we will be in a recession. You know, we're in a recession. I mean, gas at Lake is over 360, right? And it's not going down. Yeah. It, it, I saw 369 coming down Pantops from yeah, Keswick. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It was before OPEC made that uh, barrel reduction. 315. Yeah, 317 yeah. is what I was passing. Yeah, yeah. So that's, So it's gone up 50 plus cents yeah. And since that OPEC reduction. And it will be over four very shortly. And, and everyone on this set said that was going to happen. Yep. So In fact, when you came in that morning, you're like, this is a really big deal. This is a huge deal. Because we, at the time, we didn't know it was two million. We were thinking it was one. So million. one million a day, and it was and, two, and it jumped it up to two, which I believe, and Neil will correct me, I believe that's twenty percent of their output. I mean, that's a tremendous amount, and 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 it it made you nostalgic of waiting online in the seventies. Yeah, yeah. And we're seeing that. Are you seeing what's happening in France and London and Paris? Yeah, I mean, but that's. Their gas is always much more expensive because the, 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 the taxes on it are, are pretty high. But you look at my, my, you know, two weeks in Europe, right? We're going to find firsthand in two weeks from now what it's really like on the ground. We hear conversations from family and all that stuff, but um, it's, it's on the ground. The saving grace at the moment for us anyway. Is the dollar strength. Yeah, but you know what? It's a double-edged sword, right? It's like 80, 90 cents to one euro. But the inflation is so high... It's just, it's just expensive as all heck. Kevin thinks it's greed. The gas stations. They said they didn't get any new gas either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin, I'm not going to argue that one way, one way or the other. I've, I've, I've never really understood how to help price, gas prices work. I know it's a commodity. Right? I'm not an expert on it. Don't even play one on, on a... On and a, he didn't stay in the Holiday Inn <laughs> Express. And I did not stay in the Holiday Inn Express last night. What's up, MJ Arquette, the uh, queen of marketing? Yeah, so uh, it's, it, it's going to climb. It's going to impact everything. Inflation is going to go up. Um, I think the unemployment numbers are the ones that we need to, we need to keep an eye on. But, uh, you know, we're going to keep an eye on that. You know, the, that 1.5% 1 is a national number, right? We all know m micro markets are, are different. Yeah, this market is different. So we led this, for those tuning in and watching now, um, Inman, which is a real estate media insider's publication. The folks that are reading Inman are insiders, right? Yep. Looking for edge in the real estate ecosystem. And today, was it today or yesterday? It yesterday? Yes, it was yesterday. Yesterday, Inman released um, an, an analysis that said nationally, Homes valuation will reduce 1.5 percent. The, 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 this is the first we've it's, seen of that. It's the first I've seen that the uh, Freddie Mac, the the federal end of things, which is the largest lender for that matter, projecting a reduction of sales volume or sales price. They've been talking sales volume forever, right? Right. We've been talking about a 20 percent, 30 percent. But what they're talking about is the value of a home is going to be about one and a half percent off. It's nationwide, right? It, you know, we have to take a look at, at, you know, the micro locations or the, you know, there's always matters. The hyper micro locations always matter. The, the significance of it is the first time that a national said, look, we think this is going to go down. Right. And this is what we think it's going to go down on. That. We don't, we're, we're not doom and gloom. We're not trying to talk you off the ledge. No, just the facts. Yeah, just, just the facts. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Friday, you want to say it? No, you go ahead and say it. The facts, ma'am. Just, just, the, just fa the facts. Just the facts, facts yeah. ma'am. Just the facts. But the reality is, guys, and, and it's important to hear this, we got UVA here. And yeah. I know a lot of folks want to hate on UVA, but anytime you do that, realize that your home values are being protected because of the University of Virginia. 
and realize that this economic ecosystem we're in is being protected by UVA. Yeah. And if we didn't have UVA, what, what would we be? We'd be what? What? Martinsville? Well, here's the... What, what would we be? Here's a different way of asking the question. If it wasn't here, would you be here? No. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. Judah, would you be here? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. What would we be if it wasn't UVA? Yeah. What city? Can you even think of one? Viewers and listeners. That's a great question. Kevin Yancey, that's a question for you. You're good at this. Because you, can, you can't even like, put Waynesboro in that box because it, it, it has uh, uh, medical, Augusta Medical. It had big industry. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't we, think it's we had If we didn't have UVA and no industry to replace it, I, I, you know, I wouldn't know. What, I couldn't compare it. What to would it be, Kevin Yancey? It couldn't even be farm. Neil Williamson. He says Lynchburg. Neil? Yeah. But Lynchburg's got Liberty University. That's what I'm saying. That. Lynchburg's so, got Liberty. Yeah, I don't know if I would compare that. In the state of Virginia, I, you know, maybe it'd be the Southwest Virginia. That's what I'm saying. You'd be, we'd be Martinsville. We'd yeah, be, but Martinsville's got some pretty heavy industry. We'd in be it. Bristol. Brist, Bristol's got racetracks. Okay, here, here's what we would be. Travis Hackworth, and I mean this in a very complimentary way to you, we would be Danville. And Danville, okay. right? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Danville right now is the comeback city, and they're doing amazing things to revitalize the economy. <clears throat> Designated outdoor refreshment area, <laughs> Dora, <laughs> Lloyd, Lloyd Snook City Council. I mean, I, I, every time you say that, I think of Dora the Explorer. <laughs> I don't know why Dora the Explorer pops in. But Danville, we'd be Danville. Outdoors, fantastic, right? Yep. You know, you got a. What else, what, else, what else is going on? No, <laughs> they got, <laughs> me? I'm, I'm reading an article for Inman. <laughs> You're talking about Dora Danville Explorer. does have a casino coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, but they pivoted, right? You know, oh, I, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a hard um, analogy, right? Because even if UVA isn't here, we're on this corridor, right? So, it, you know. What are you saying? The corridor of Central Virginia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're on the Richmond, D.C. kind of corridor on that end of it but but it's here right the reality it's here so look I've, I've finally got the article pulled up so and neil's neil wants to give you some knowledge sure justin keller welcome to the program as well neil williamson president of the free enterprise forum neil williamson um he says this and and neil williamson this is also for kevin yancey gas stations must pay to refill their tanks at current rates thus price increases most stations make very little profit on fuel He's right. Well, so I can firsthand tell you that uh, one of my uncles used to own gas stations, and you know this was back in the '70s and the '80s, and it was fractions at that time. It's fractions of a cent on a gallon. It, he made his money off of his mechanics, right? Well, like I mean, you take it like a Tiger Fuel. Yeah, they make money Bel -Air, off of the sandwiches. The sandwiches, the deli, the convenience store, yeah. where the margins. 100% yeah, plus. I've, I've had this discussion with the Suttons, and they do not, Dan and make, Taylor. They do not make money off of their, their fuel. And they're not going to make money off of, their, off of their EV charging either, right? It's just they make money off It's a of way to capture a consumer sure. to sure. sell them auxiliary go goods. Sure. Aux auxiliary goods. Other I have a hard time with that one. Other stuff. Other stuff. Thank other you. Stuff. Other stuff. Other stuff. Rock. Rock. Paper. Fire. Fire. Uh. Scissors. So national home price is projected to fall. This is according to Inman and according to uh, uh, Fannie Mae. So I'm looking at a graph chart here that where they're, where they're projecting um, fourth quarter to still be about 9% up, second quarter about 3.3%, and then in, excuse me, first quarter of 23. Second quarter in 23, they're looking at a negative 0.3%. Third quarter, negative 0.4, and fourth quarter next year, negative 0.5. Again, my point is, if, I'm, if I bought in 2017 at Lake Monticello and sold today or sold next year, I'm still making $140,000, um, net. Well, actually, it's not even net because you've got to calculate your mortgage difference and all that stuff. But your appreciation was over $130,000, $140,000. You buy today, you're going to have to hold for that five, ten year window. And this, these charts go up and down. Um, Neil Williamson's got a really good comment. Cool. When the city forefathers. Should have invited him today. Love Neil Williamson. Love you too, Sean Tubbs. 
Uh, Neil Williamson, when the city forefathers moved Interstate 64 to Charlottesville, the Seville MSA economic vitality was engaged. Yeah, so MSA, for those who do not know, is the Metropolitan Statistical Area, right? So for us, it's uh, Charlottesville, Albemarle, Fulvana, Nelson, Green, and Louisa. I think I got them all right. Neil will correct me. So that's what we call the MSA. So when people say, and, that, and that's what builds around AMI, area medium income, right? So if you take a look at Fulvana County and it's a hundred and something thousand dollars, I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, people in Fulvana County go, well, hold it. That's pretty high for Fulvana County. Yeah. But this is the MSA, so this is the whole region that takes into consideration into that. I mean, that's a great comment. Yep, yep. I mean, so he, he, he's saying there's other aspects to the area that are driving economic vitality. We understand UVA is number one. And there are, I mean, we got tech, we got vineyards, we got wineries. We're the second largest wedding capital on the East Coast. If you want a great spot for a rehearsal dinner, Well Hung Vineyard, the restaurant in Gordonsville. <laughs> wait, 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 do they gotta pay us some money or something? Today? He's asking for donations to Free Enterprise Forum. <laughs> We Which we gladly do. Are we getting a percentage of the deal? We gladly <laughs> do. We gladly do. There's a lot of other stuff. So, so just, just to put in, just some quick, quick math, just round numbers. You know, that 317 is going to drop maybe five grand, right, if their projection is right, this time next year. And I, so instead of making 141, I'm going to make... 135. So what point are you worried about then? What part I, of the market I'm, I'm are you not, worried about? Are you worried about any aspect of the market? Any sliver of price point are you worried about? Are you are you worried oh, about jump uh, are you worried about jumbo? Yeah, it, we can look into it real quickly, but but um, but it's already happened. The the, the quote unquote luxury market has slowed down. The entry level is slowing down. It's just because it's harder to get a mortgage, right? Right. On, on, on the end of it. But again, like I said, I've, I've got a whole weekend packed of showings. Some of that might be with Mrs. Smith being gone and I'm getting you do this kind of stuff. But uh, that may Stay on task. That Keith. may or may not be happening. Um, the, but the, the millennials are doing it. And I was like, so tell me, how do you feel about 7, 8%? I'm good. I'm going to refinance it. They get it. They understand it. Right? You know, they understand getting in the game is more important than sitting on the sidelines, and they're also getting the inventory is picking up, right? But look, a, a couple of the buyers, um, uh, you know, we had, even in Nelson County, we had some deals that were on the market for four or five days, uh, couldn't get to, get to see them fast enough, they went under contract. So, you know, homes are moving, people are buying and selling, the volume of the buy and the sell will decrease a little bit, which means folks in my industry, you know, we need to up our skills a little bit, up our ability to, to perform on the end of it. But we'll be out there helping people. I, I'm, we had a business planning meeting with our folks at YRP um, last, this Tuesday. Tuesday. And I mean this, uh, and I've said it on the show before. I'm personally excited about the real estate market well, coming up. Someone of your experience... This well, is where you say, I, 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 yeah, that's not. It's not about me, right? Uh, truly, it's not about me. I'm excited about it because this is when the cream of the crop shows up. That's what I'm saying. You can go ahead. Yeah, but it's just not me. There's many others. That, of course, that that, that, that that can do that. But in uncertain, volatile markets, people yeah. like you that have experience and have yeah. seen a ton of different markets are going to do yeah. get market share. Yeah, I, it's just. I've, Folks that have never been through this before are going to lose market share. I've been there, done that. I got a bunch of T-shirts and scars from it. Right. Right. And so we try to help navigate folks through whatever minefields that are in front of us at, at this point, which change constantly. Right. Right. On, on that end of it. And the key to do that. And, and the other thing, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, why do you do the show three times a week? It makes me better at helping people, you know, buy and sell homes because. And it's your face is everywhere. Well, it just makes me better, okay. right? Because I, I, I have to crunch all these numbers. I've got to understand this, this kind of, uh, you know, where we're at so we can help counsel people. When somebody says, oh, my God, I just saw an article in Inman or wherever it ends up that price is going to go down at 1.5%, should I buy now? And what's the answer to that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The answer to that is get in the game. 
You taught us that. Yeah, yeah. You got you got to get in the game, and 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 the the thing is, look, don't buy now if you want to. If you if you have to sell within twelve to twenty four months, don't do that. Don't do that. That that's a bad move. That's a bad move. You know, you're going to have to rent. It's the same thing. We counseled our daughter and son son in law out in Seattle two years ago. They were like, "Well, we want to buy now." I said, "No, you know what." You know, let's 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 get through the next two years. Let's figure out where you're going, f- figure out where your where is, and then we can kind of get into that. It's gonna. Well, hurt. you broke some news on the show. They're heading to Richmond. They are heading to Richmond. Yeah, yeah. No, but this was two years ago. They wanted to buy in Rich. They wanted to buy in Seattle, right? And I said, yeah, you know, I, I think you just stay where you're at, comfortable, raise some money. What do you make of the Richmond market? Uh, man, very different. Richmond is a very different different market um, and the way to put a perspective on that as the current chair of the uh, land trust um, the second largest land trust in the state of Virginia is Maggie Walker out of Richmond right um, they're swimming in inventory well they're swimming in vacant yeah but they can rehab and repurpose that's exactly right um, and and some of them these are in the I thousands listen, I listen to you these are in doubt. Thank you. These are in doubt. In doubt. The, the, when you get the, when you start reciting my dad jokes, I then, know. Then we got a problem. We spent a lot of time together. So, so look, they, they got thousands of units available that folks are are vacant. They haven't paid the taxes in five years. The local government doesn't say here land trusts happen. We don't have that. That that just doesn't exist here, on that on that end of it. So it's a very different market. Um, as we've always talk about this, and even in our market. You know, one block or two blocks one way or the other can matter, right? It, this is where we're going now. Where does the, uh, where does the, your, your, your daughter is a millennial or a zillennial? Uh, she is, this is, this is not fair. I can't <laughs> this remember is your daughter. how old she is. This is your daughter here. <laughs> I can't remember how old she is. Is she a millennial? Is I, think a, do you need to put, I think she's 29. I think she's 29. Can you put the infographic up for the she, uh, generations? Judah's going to put the generational yeah, I think she's 29. Okay. But 29? Could be. I don't know. <laughs> I 29. Even, I can't what even, does that make her, Judah? She's what, 29. What, what we were making reference to who wants to be a millionaire? That would mean she was born in 92. 90, 93. No. 93. So it's 94. She, I knew she was 94. So she was born in 94? She was born in 94. Could be. Maybe. Well, that means she's 28. Okay, she's 28. <laughs> I don't know. She's 28, 29. That's the tail end of millennials. She's a young millennial. So she's essentially like, is she a zillennial? The millennial zillennial crossover? She's lucky I got the name right. Is she a zillennial? She's a millennial. She's a young millennial, right? Or middle. She's at the end of the millennial scale. Got it. Just before generations started. Okay, so where does the young millennial want to live in Richmond? It's interesting. Uh, so they're looking, they, they want to reproduce Seattle in Richmond, which is going to be difficult, right? They want to be able to walk from their rental to a dozen restaurants, dozen coffee shops. There's, you can do that in Richmond. Correct, correct. But, but, but there, you can walk for blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks, and it's all the same. In Richmond, it, it will make a difference. If you couple blocks one way or the other, the, the, the neighborhood could be what they want and maybe could not be what they want. But that's, that's what we're looking for. And they want, they want the classic uh, white picket fence, mm. little yard. Sounds like know. West End. Well, I, they, I, I think we're going to end up looking at like one of the, um, I like the museum district personally. That one's good. Uh, uh, museum uh, district is awesome. Yeah, and there's some really nice um, townhomes, a little, little neat little backyards, uh, you know, the classic, you know, 1800s, uh, construction uh, townhomes in there with some nice backyards, nice walking to everything, mass transit, but that's kind of where they're leaning. At. Would you say this? Let me ask you this question. You don't, I had this conversation yesterday. A friend of mine, good friend, Judah was here, owns a uh, townhome with uh, their partner. Got years of equity, not tremendous years, but some years of equity into that townhome. What's your advice to that particular uh, young couple to do with their townhome? How long have they owned it? Enough where the equity is substantial, substantial. because they made the purchase pre-pandemic. So 18, 19, something like that? Yeah. Hmm. 
we're talking about substantial equity because of the craziness that was the pandemic. Yeah, so we're back. We're and then a price point from a rental that could cover the monthly nut and then some. So, the, so the, you know, I would start asking questions of, about where, where they're at, right? You know, what, what their jobs are. You know, Both employed. I got it, but are they, you know, at university, they're self-employed, you know, different. One of them. Got it. One of them self-employed. Yeah, so part, part of the conversation would start out is, so what's your goals and visions? Let's not talk about property. What's your goals? Right? And if they start talking about, hey, you know, we have enough money to buy new, I don't have to sell, then my advice would be to probably keep that as a rental if they're debt to income ratio. That's why this, this income conversation is so important, right? So if they're debt to income conversation, I'm having this exact conversation with my uncle. He has a townhome in, in um, Old Trail, right? Your uncle? My uncle. He's getting remarried, um, and we're talking about this very conversation. Pop's brother? Not my mother. Okay. I have, a, I have an uncle that's five years older than me. Okay. Wow. That's a young man. Yeah, we, we hung out together. Um, so in any event, uh, uh, you know, so we're having this conversation. I, I'm getting ma life change, right? Getting married, right? He's in a townhome, which is great for a single guy, but this is not going to be for marriage. He wants to stay in Old Trail, right? Yada, yada, yada. What do I do? Do I, do I, because he's got the ability, and let's assume this Millennial has the ability, the cash ability, to hold on to both, right? And is their debt to income works that they can finance this, the, the new purchase? My advice would be to hang on to it and, and rent it. I will tell you, years ago it would not have been, right? But now, if you can do that, and I would, I would, adv same advice I gave my uncle: if this is what you want to do, call Ally Property Management. Do not manage it yourself. Let it be on automatic. You know, let the equity build a little bit because they bought it just like this townhome, I'm assuming, and have a ton of equity. That's what I do. On the other hand, on the other hand, they're making a substantial jump, right? They're going from a $300,000 townhome to a $900,000 purchase. You probably want the cash out and help reduce the purchase price, right? The loan amount on the purchase. So a lot of the details matter. Here's the question. This is the tough pill for people to swallow. You bought a house, a townhome, a condo before the pandemic. And you now have substantial equity. Substantial equity. You have substantial equity. We're talking tens of thousands, if not six figures more of equity, Keith. The fear for a lot of folks is utilizing that equity to make a second purchase. It's Knowing that you could have a rental, a tenant, undoubtedly from day one, cover your monthly nut on your current property. So I had a similar... A lot of people have a tough part with that. I had a similar conversation. I'll leave the name out of it because it's an elected official that owns multiple rental properties. And he called me up last night, was asking exactly the same question. What should I do? Should I sell them? Should I continue to rent them? My first question was, um, are you managing yourself? And he goes, yes. I said, well, stop that right away because that's just nuts. And that's the conversation. The conversation is people aren't paying me. I'm dealing with problems and all that stuff. Hire ally property management. Let them manage it. Just, just let them do their job, and, and they'll do the magic on it. Um, I also had to have the conversation about the 1031 in conversation with them about what is he going to do if he's going to sell all this stuff out that he owns mostly in cash. The question is, is so the, the fear of holding on to it is what? Is the fear of holding on to it depreciation? It loses value? Is the fear of holding on to it as a rental? I don't want to deal with the people, the rent, you know, tenants, right? So what's the fear? What is your concern about that? And look, take Lake Monticello's example. We'll, we'll talk about things. If I bought in 2017, and I sell, and my property is now, I got $141,000 worth of equity built into it, and I want to buy something, and I've got the debt to income ability to do it, then hang on to it as a rental. That's the trick saying. is, the trick is, you've got to know when to sell, right? What is this? You've got to know when to fold them. What no, is, the is that Kenny Rogers? <laughs> Kenny Rogers. Should we not sing that? No, song? you should sing it. I'd no, love to hear totally you sing it. No when to hold them. No and when to fold them. But anyway, so that's no the trick. No when to fold them. So we, at one time, Yona and I, prior to the time of great unpleasantness, had about 14 rentals, and we got rid of them. 
and it wasn't because of any great foreseeing of a market change. It was, um, we just had a string of, A, I managed it myself, which was a huge disaster, and we had a string of tenants not paying us. I said, you know what, this is ridiculous. The market is good. Let's sell them. We sold them, and we turned around and put the money into business and, you know, other things, which the bank ended up getting in 2000. Cool. That was <laughs> bad luck. Not, not your fault. Gwen, Gwendolyn Gale Cassidy watching the program. She says it's Albemarle County. We live yeah. in Albemarle County. Unless you desperately need the cash, keep your real estate. Yeah, so... Amen. Yeah. She says, my little Solomon Court condo has increased 2.5x in value. I will yeah. never sell. I rent it for 1800 um, a month and rent a room 0.3 miles away from my office, paying less than half what I can rent my condo for. Wow. So... Um, I'm looking through this article again because there was another um, a, uh, a portion of it that we're talking about nationwide. Look, you want to keep a track on your rental. Again, this is why you want to hire somebody that's a trusted advisor to manage your rental for you on that end of it because they're going to keep track of what's going on because that's the one communication that I do on a regular basis with Ally, with Suzanne, with Ally Property. You know, house rents looking, house percentages looking. But the rents are going to be climbing single digits. I don't think you're going to see too many double digits. They're coming down a little bit on that end of it. But the rent is going to climb up. And if that works for you and it's part of your plan, that's great. On the other hand, I might need that cash to buy something else, right? And if that's the case, then that's what it's there for, right? You built up your equity. You built up your, your uh, wealth for what it's worth. And then you turn around and buy something new. What do you think of uh, Gwendolyn Gail Cassidy? I love your strategy. Um, where, where in the world is she right now? Are you in Italy? Uh, think, G, GC, G, uh, GGC, the I queen think, of um, travel, Gwendolyn I Gale Cassidy. I think she's in Italy. I think she's in Italy. Italy. Um, she says she lives in Almoro County. Yep. She's got a condo in Solomon Court. Yep. Um, the condo at Solomon Court rents for 1800 a month. She how then. Many, how, many, how many rooms? She's in Italy in Ca, I don't, Catalica. Catalina? That's, the Cat there's a C in there. Is it Catalina or Catalica? I'm, I'm not. One of the things that viewers and listeners who watch this program, I may know a boatload about Charlottesville and Central Virginia, but I don't know a boatload about the rest of the world. I am not what you would call very cosmopolitan. Much to the oh, chagrin. I, would, I, would, that, that's not, I don't think. Judah, what is the definition of cosmopolitan? That's not cosmopolitan. That would be a world traveler. Yon and I were. I mean, isn't cosmopolitan a world traveler? Oh, I thought we were talking about drinks. <laughs> oh, you thought that was a cocktail? Cosmo well, I know it's a cocktail. Oh, I know it's a cocktail. Cosmopolitan is, is someone who's got a world's perspective. But you have a world... I disagree with you. you I have, have... You have a world's perspective. That doesn't mean you have to travel the world to have a world's perspective. Yeah, I, I know a lot about yeah, without doubt. news in the world because I read, yeah, okay. but I haven't traveled very much. I think that makes much. you cosmopolitan. Hmm, just you means take, from all over the world, different countries. Pardon? Just cosmopolitan means including people from all over the world. Are you on a three shot? Are people seeing you? No. Okay. Yeah, we, we have to see you okay. when you talk. That's how the shows go. <laughs> or if not, you're just the voice of God from afar and people That's are right. like, who is that person? <laughs> uh, Gwendolyn Do Gale Cassidy. Do call him God now? She, well, I mean, if he doesn't show his face, people are like, I've literally been told this by the viewers and listeners. When he talks and we don't see him, we wonder what's, who that is. It's God. Yeah. I'm saying it's the omniscient voice of God and they're like, we know it's Judah. Um, Gwendolyn Gale Cassidy says Cat Tol Ica. She spelled it out phonetically for us. She so says that's Southern Italy. Is that I Southern remember, Italy? I remember, if I remember correctly, that would be Southern Italy. Oh, Judah's going to call yeah, it up. I, I believe. I believe. I may be wrong, but I believe that's Southern Italy somewhere. Maybe I got that wrong. This is a great house hack that she did. She's a smart lady. Yeah. She's a smart lady. Very She's got right. a little Solomon Court condo. It's increased 2.5x yep. in value. She says she'll never sell it. It currently rents for 1800 a month. And then she doesn't live in the place she owns. She rents a room 0.3 miles from her office, and she pays less than half what she could rent her condo for. She rents her Solomon Court two-bedroom condo through furnished finders to traveling nurses, oh, most renew their yeah. contracts and you never have to do anything. Yeah. Um, and two, she, did she say two bedroom? Two bedroom. And yeah. she said, seriously, furnished finders is the best and kicks Airbnb's arse. Um, and it is Southern 
And you, and you know why the workaround? Southern on the coast. Got it. Southern on the coast, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. It's not southern. So, so is it south of Rome or north of Rome? Yeah. So I, 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 I'm pretty sure that somewhere around, somewhere between, it's somewhere between Naples and Sicily, if I remember correctly. But we will not go down that yeah, world yeah. traveler road. Yeah. So, Furnished finders also vets the tenants. Yeah, yeah. So, and the interesting about that, 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 that because they're normally six, smart. six month rentals. So they're not short term rentals. They're normal, normal rentals. Yeah. So in her case, it's super smart, right? Opposite side of Rome, south of, oh, southeast coast, south of Rebony. Yeah. So, uh, my family's from Batty, which is on that coast that she's talking about, a little further south, I think, than than where she is at the moment. But in any event, yeah. So great. So so what this wonderful human being is doing is she's building equity, renting it out. She's probably positive cash flow and the heck out of it, if I remember the math right, on that end of it. And she's doing. It. But that's very. It's kind of like you and I were having a, comp, a pre-production conversation about you know this um, case study thing. That is a very unique circumstance. I mean, that's a house hack. It's it's a house hack, but it's a you've got to really fit a very specific uh, set of criteria. Well, she she has the she travels nimble. The world. It, that's right. She travels. travels. She's the world. single. She's single. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, just an awesome human being. No love kids. Her. That love, helps. Yeah. Love, love her to death, but she's very specific. You and your family probably couldn't do that. No. If right? I did that, my wife would be like... Yeah. You would be single. I, 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 yeah, would be I wouldn't single. be here right now. You would yeah. be single. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, but, but you know, in a, in a general big term concept on it, if she went ahead and owned um, this unit and she lived in it or she's traveling the world and subletting it out or whatever, whatever she's doing... She says it's cheaper for her to live overseas. Yeah, and, 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 and she's just got a great life, right? Yeah. She's traveling the world, doing all kinds of great stuff. Living the dream. It's freaking awesome stuff. It's stuff that Keith and Yona want to do, you know, when another five or ten years from now, um, on that end of it. But back to, the, back to the analysis that if I bought at Lake Monticello, because this is what I got the numbers for, in 2017, and it's and at worth 195 and today it's uh, 317 and you've got the cash... To go ahead and hold on to that, it, it'll appreciate up. I mean, in, in 11 years, it went from 176 to 317. Now, there's just so that we're, we're transparent about this median sales price, Lake Monticello, in 12 was 176. 13, it dropped to 149. Then it, dropped, then it raised back up in 14 to 194. Then in 2015, it dropped to 180. 16, 187. Then it just started climbing from, it started climbing steadily from 15 to 22, 180, 187, 195, 214, 224, 235, 270, and 317. But 2012 and 15 was still the tail end of the time of great unpleasantness, and prices were going up and down, right, and all that end of it. I never told you this. Um, in 2000, when did I buy that thing? Let's see here. I, I find it hard to believe 16. with almost four years. That I haven't told you something? Well, you just recently found out I'm a lefty, but we'll yeah. leave that one alone. I mean, there's some things we don't know about each other. <laughs> Trust me, there's some things we don't want to know about right, each other. Right. Um, I never told you this. Um, in 2000, goodness gracious, when was that? So 7, 14, 16, 16 minus 22. 2007, when I bought the uh, condo at the Villas at Southern Ridge, now rental, it was between that three-bedroom, two-bath condo in a home in Lake Monticello. Oh, I've never heard that before. Yeah. And I think you made a good choice. I mean, maybe. I mean, the homes in Lake Monticello, you just told me, are, are appreciated at a much greater clip than the uh, condo at the Villas of Southern Ridge. Yeah. Um, but Would have been I, more potentially difficult for me to manage when I was managing it myself because yeah, before yeah. I didn't have Allied Property Management managing it, I was doing it solo, yeah. which made it challenging. And And... Um, the rents at Lake Monticello were historically, and they recently, have, they're accelerating like everybody else, but historically they've kind of, they were very stable. So, you know, the, the potential of having rents increase. On what's, that, a, what's a three bedroom, two bath at the lake rent for? 
I'd have to. I look. mean, this guy's the mayor of the lake over here. <laughs> no, Brittany Gray watching. She says Brit she's a Brittany, le Brittany will know. She says she's Brittany a lefty too, Keith. Brittany, what are the rents for a three That's bedroom, two bedroom? Brittany is awesome. Brittany is awesome. You know, left handed are geniuses. By the way, Brittany, um, she shared something on Facebook about her personal life, which was a pretty awesome thing to do. Um, you know, I do this regularly on how much we lost and, and, and recovered from. And if you have an opportunity, friend Brittany, read her story. Um, it's pretty inspiring on how you kind of go from one place to where she is now. So it's pretty awesome. I also I, found I, it inspiring, Brittany. Very inspiring. Very inspiring. Gwendolyn says lefties are supposed to be very, very intelligent. Says you, Keith, very, <laughs> very much fit that mold. Well, thank you for lying to me. I sure do appreciate that. So yeah. a three-bedroom, two-bath at the lake is 1600 Yeah. So the Vils at Southern Ridge condo is, I mean, I'm doing it at like 17 and change. Yeah. Market's probably like 18 and change. Yeah. I rent a little below market to yeah, maintain you're, occupancy. Your, your cash flow would be, that's, that's the point I was making. Your cash flow would be a little better there than like money. Why? Is, you think now, strictly because of the location? Yeah, it's always... A proximity to epicenter of employment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you're, you're driving 20 minutes more than... Than, than somebody who's at Southern Ridge going to UVA, right? That's a 10 minute drive. If, if I'm working at the hospital from Southern, the, the village yeah. at Southern Ridge. The village at Southern Ridge is like eight minutes to the hospital. Yeah. I mean, you go Old Lynchburg, JPA. Not, matter of fact, I know that because it's one of my bike rides. It's a great bike ride. It's, you can bike ride right there. Exactly. Real, real easy. Right. Real easy. Would you take um, Old no, Lynchburg to JPA? If, if Yona's watching, I do not want to have this conversation. Why? Because you went Fifth Street Extended? I may have gone a road that I told her that I wouldn't go on. Well, Fifth Street Extended, I'm worried about you now. That's a dangerous road for biking. Yeah, so I go my... But you can backdoor it through Cherry... So my 25-mile bike ride... JPA. From, ...from my office is I shoot up um, Avon, cut around Fifth Street, go through that pretty net, that intersection onto Fifth Street, then I go all the way down to Ragged Mount, uh, to uh, Dudley Mountain Road and loop all the way around and come back down on 250. That's a good ride. It's about 25. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, um, little steep. It's about 2,200, 2,400 foot elevation gain. Um, you're getting a lot of props from the viewers and listeners. Am I really? Yeah. <laughs> Not only are they saying you're very, very intelligent because you're a lefty, yeah. but they're saying um, ADD and ADHD people are also very, very intelligent. I've been saying that for freaking years. and nobody, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we, uh, it's so not only are you a lefty, but your ADHD is one of the most ADHD people I've ever met. So you're a genius. That's what they're saying is you're a genius. I'm a freaking genius. You're a genius. Is that, are they really mean that's, that? No, that's uh, what they're saying. Yeah, well, thank you. That's, that's nice. Yeah, yeah it's, um, I think if a quick Google search, you'll find out. I'm not sure if Einstein was a lefty. But he definitely had uh, a a a ADD. I call it ADD. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. And and I have to admit publicly, you know, the older I'm getting, the worse is getting. Wait, the, <laughs> it is. How do you know? I know. Were there people telling you, or you're experiencing it firsthand? Well, unfortunately, I have a lot of. Not fortunately. What's up, Brian Combs? We love For you, Brian Combs. Fortunately, I have a lot of very honest people in my life. To include you, <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, they'll make okay, Smith. Yeah, you know, get back, get back here and do that. But it, it's true, right? Because you can, for those who don't have it, right? Um, you intensely focus on an item, and then it goes. It just, it just vanishes, and then you go on to something else. So, people who are watching the show, I don't know if they can see all the papers in front of me. <laughs> On it. Can you somehow show that? Uh, I think the. Oh, he's moving the camera. Are you moving the camera down? No, I'm showing the. Uh, a wider shot? Oh, the studio camera. Yeah, so if, if anybody who's watching it can see this, and I've got. Look I've at got, Jerry's papers in front of him. Yeah, Jerry's got no papers. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a phone that I can do math on. I've got paper. I've got something in front he's of me. He's got four different marking, writing utensils. I have with different colors. The blue so. pen is behind you. The computer, the Surface. Oh, good. I was getting nervous. I couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, and then on top of ADD, I uh, got a little bit of over compulse. What is it? Uh, OCD. OCD. You're, you are OCD. I've seen those of, tendencies. I got a little bit of OCD, but but folks that that have this intensify this. But I've learned. I and this show taught me this, by the way. It is doing this show 
has made me manage my ADD much better. Mm-hmm. And I've lear- I learned the trick. I'll write a word down, or, or even if you look at my notes, I draw pictures. I- <laughs> You've seen them. You've I've seen them. Seen I draw pictures, and then I'll look at the picture, and then it'll just pop back in my head. Oh, God. You know? I'm sorry, guys. That's just the way the brain operates. Daniel Pettit, thank you very much. We'll get to your comments here. DP Mustache Dan Pettit. Brittany Gray has such a great compliment for you. She says, I can talk with Keith Smith. I can speak with Keith Smith for five minutes, and I literally never leave empty-handed in knowledge. Oh, wow. Wow. You're loving today's show. No. I'm... I'm, uh, It's... You know, Barack Obama, James Garfield, Herbert Hoover, Harry Truman, Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, all left-handers. Let's add Keith Smith to the list. Well, thank you. I, I'm, I am Catholic, so I don't take praise all, all that well, but thank you. Thank you. Look, you know, it's, um, you know, I, my, it's, it's something that I've always tried to do. I just me. I just, I'm super, always been comfortable in my Keith suit. What am I wearing today? Banana Republic. Oh, Banana Republic uh, suit on that, and it, it is what it is. And you know, don't ask me a question if you don't want to know my opinion, right? Or does it- well, even if they don't ask you a question, you still give them your opinion. Yeah, yeah well, that's being a New Yorker. <laughs> then they get through, then I'm a New Yorker. Right? Oh. No, no, I think it's don't ask it. Don't ask a question if you don't want my opinion. No, there really is. If you are in five feet of me, I will give you my opinion. You say that like that's a bad thing. No, I like your opinion. It yeah. certainly makes yeah. for a great talk show. Well, correct, yeah. So, hey, I got something in front of me, and thank you for the compliments. It's, it's More of them are coming. You want to hear them? <laughs> no, I'm embarrassed, so no, thank you. But uh, Dan Pettit's got some stuff. Dan Pettit knows yeah. Lake Monticello. Yeah. Does he not? I, first of all, I know Dan isn't giving me a compliment. No, Daniel Pettit's not giving me <laughs> Daniel Pettit likes to give you zingers. Right. So when Dan stops doing that, then I know I'm in trouble. Um, DP, mustache Dan Pettit, front of the program. He's got a fantastic forehand, one of the best tennis strokes I have seen. Beautiful wife, excellent salesman. Love Dan Pettit. Um, Dan Pettit, we got a uh, tennis tournament coming up that we're, we might run, in, run, in, run into each other at the board set here. He says this. First, he likes my jacket. The, the, uh, the jacket does look good. Thank you. He also says, um, keep in mind at Lake Monticello, owner pays twice yes. for HOA fees with yes. a rental. What's yes. that mean? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> wow. So the backstory to that is. So, if, okay, I'm learning here. Yeah, so the, 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 the backstory to that is. We've had this discussion once before. H, each HOA is very different, right? It has because it's they get to set their own rules and regulations and so forth and so on. Lake Monticello was created in '68, 1968, not 1868, 1968, and its covenants and restrictions at the time said any rate increase requires two thirds vote, so it's or, or majority, a simple majority vote on that end of it. So in order to increase dues, there's a vote that has to happen. And we got 4,500 folks voting. So 50% of whoever votes has to vote for that. To change the covenants and restrictions, it requires two-thirds, which is a whole different animal uh, on it. But what's happening is they, they would have vote fails, right? They couldn't get dues increase. So now what the association can do, it can charge fees, right? So it can charge fees to offset the lack of capital. Is that making sense? I'm with you. So what they what they did is they created, I can't remember how many years ago, my God, it must have been 10, maybe 20 years ago, um, and, and, and Dan will know, a rental fee. So not only do I pay my normal due, so if, if you have your home in the subdivision that you live in, and if you want to rent it out, you don't pay an extra set of dues for that. No, right? no. Like Monticello does, and I think it's 500 bucks. How do they know? Your neighbor's going to drop a dime on you? That's how they find out? Yeah. They'll know. They've, they've, they, um, Neighbors drop dimes. Yeah, so I'm going to really get myself into trouble. Love when you do this. Um, so the ECC. Is What's that? The Environmental Control Committee, which is their ARB committee, which yada, yada, yada. Um, they go out and check properties. I mean, they, they, they do that, and they look. It's, eventually, they'll figure it out. The, the path to it is, if you want a barcode... Ah, uh, that's yeah. how they figure well, it out. Well, so, so you can... You, right? 
if you want, you want to get in the gates at Lake Monticello. You want a barcode. If you want you some rent, extra ones, you got to produce a lease. There it is. That stuff. That's how they figured out. If you don't use the barcode and you're going to go through the man gate at the front entrance or the or the remote gate at that, then you have to be called in as a guest. There right? it so is. It becomes this whole thing, right? So, so technically, that's how they they figure it out. So Dan Pettit highlights this, Jerry, with Villas at Southern Ridge versus Lake Monticello. You have more overhead and HOA fees with this second HOA at Lake Monticello that would erode margin. So to your point, this is the viewers and listeners making us smarter here. You've yeah, identified that, that happens regularly. Yeah, right? You've I, identified I, I walk away from this show smarter every time. Right. And I just did learn something. You identified that the rent is eight to ten percent more at the Villas of Southern Ridge, Fifth yeah. Street Extended, than Lake Monticello. And then Dan highlighted the second HOA fee. Correct. And, and, and I don't know what you're due. So, so you have to do the math, right? Because you're... Like a buck 65? A, a month. Yeah. Yeah, so it's What's 90 yours? is roughly, it's 90 for the dues. A month for you guys? Yeah, for the... Uh, uh, so a buck 65 times Mrs. 12. Smith up, but I'm pretty sure it's 90 bucks. 1980, 90 times 12 is... 1,080, 1980 minus 1080. So Villa Southern Ridge is 900 more a year. And then Dan is saying the monthly, the second HOA for renting Which is- Which I believe is 500 bucks. That's what he says, yeah. it's 500 bucks. So minus 500 means the Delta is 400. Mm -hmm. Between, so Lake Monticello is 400 less a month. Or yeah. excuse me, excuse me, 400 less per year. Correct. And HOAs. Correct. But your rent's offsetting that. Oh. More than yeah, you're right. So, so, yeah. so it so it offsets and, and it in two that? months, roughly. I don't give me the exact number, but what year did you buy that again? Uh, the worst time possible. So pretty much 2008. Yes, yeah, so I didn't go back to 2008. Yeah, so I was looking at. But did you? Pay Dan, it? remember Dan Pettit was in the sales office when I bought it. That's when I met Dan uh, Pettit. Yeah. It was Dan Pettit, Rick Spagoni, and Amanda Spagoni. So was it over 150? Oh yeah. Yeah. It was like uh, now they're trading. It was so uh, the purchase price would have been substantially less. I got it um, in phase run. Re remember Dan Pennant? Um, phase one at the villas, there was going to be five phases of development. Bart Fry got people buying at phase one because it was $5,000 less in purchase than phase two. And then phase three was going to be 5K higher, phase four, 5K higher. Five, it was a marketing. Uh, but then the, I, I wouldn't know anything how to do that. Yeah. I've, never, I've never done that before. <laughs> but then the, you know what hit the fan? Yeah. So phase one became the highest price point of all the phases. Yeah. But now, it, Keith, it legitimately took 16 years to recoup the value. No, not 16. It took like 14 years to recoup the value. But I got it at a buck 80. Yeah, but you're making my point. Now right? they're 225, 230. This is your point. You're making my point. Yeah. Don't be afraid to buy now. There it is. Right. You know, there's always, you bought it in. It, when you bought it, was nothing like what it is now, right? I mean, it's not even in, in the same universe. I'm trying to take a look real quickly. Brittany's got a good point here, but the villas Brittany, includes you're making the us pool. Better today. She says the villas includes the pool and the gym and the amenities. By the time at Lake Monticello, if you want to buy the pool pass, oh, yeah. the pool pass is extra at the lake. I got to tell you, I've been living there since 1987. I never bought a pool pass. I've, never, I've actually probably been to the pool five times. Since 87. I just go swim at the lake. Is the pool busy? Oh, yeah, it's usually busy, yeah. And they just redid it. I mean, the lake is, is, is you know, pretty awesome right now. If we want to talk a little bit about that. They, they, for quite a few years, all the amenities and the infrastructure was substantially lacking in quality. And, and they just haven't done anything. But they spent about $4 million bucks updating everything. Brand new clubhouse, brand new pool, brand new um, pro shop, you know, increased, the, they did brand new parks. That, I mean, they upgraded the whole facility, but for like decades, um, I don't, you probably never went to play golf over there when the old golf, the old, um, the old pro shop was there. It was literally built on stilts, and when people are in it, you can watch it move. Scott Morris, Ross Mortgage, hey, one of the best Ross Mortgage production producers in the company of Ross Mortgage. In fact, Scott Morris, I'm going to give you some props right now. Ross Mortgage, Scott Morris. <laughs> Are you um, it again? September top producers. Scott Morris, one of the top producers at Ross Mortgage Corporation. Dude, you guys need a loan? Scotty Moe. Scott Morris. 
Ross Mortgage. I'm serious. I've seen the dude make miracles happen. Scotty Moe says this, Scott Mortgage Morris, Lake Monticello is in the best condition it has ever been right oh, yeah. now. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's, the roads are done. We've got, we've got um, fireflies in the ground. They just connected it to my house yesterday. So I got firefly at the house. So I've, I'm soon going to be burning 1,000 up, 1,000 down on it. Uh, you've got a new pro shop, a new clubhouse pro shop. revamp, Club, Club, pool revamp. Parks are redone. Home values are going up. So what you did, what you, I'm just going to look up what, if you would have bought Lake Monticello, what, what month did you buy? In I, I'm trying to do, okay, let me see here. I spent seven years living at Villas of Southern Ridge, seven years Villa Southern Ridge, seven years at Rockledge Drive in Redfields. That's 14 years. And we're now in, just did our second year in Glenmore. So that's 16 years, 2022 minus 16. So call it 2000, I think it was 2007. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 2007. So I'm going to take a look at which, what would have cost a house. 2007. Dan Pettit was in the sales office. Dan Pettit, what was phase one going for 2007 at the Vils at Southern Ridge? I believe I got it for, and I can look this up. DP, help me out here. 180. Rick Spagoni was negotiating a hard deal. Amanda Spagoni was negotiating a hard deal. Dan Pettit was negotiating a hard deal. You were too, by the I way. I was. I was. It was phase one, so they had a little leverage. This was before the you-know-what hit the fan. The you know what hit the fan about seven months later, though. <laughs> Literally, Keith. So I want to say so, 180, so that, so the, 180K. So that's interesting. The medium sales price in 2007 was 244.9. Call it 245. Okay. Mine I got for a buck 80. Yeah. So you, you got it for less, right? It didn't you, appreciate you, like the lake did. Now they're 225. Yeah. Now they're so, 225. So, so if you would have bought that at 245. Now, keep in mind, that was at the height of the market, right? And then we started that, you know. Two, this is fun. If I, look at, if I look at 2008, 2009, you'll see that 245 drop. So it went from 2007, so that you know, of 245 and 2012, 176. But if you would have bought that at 245 and held on to it now, um, it, you, you've got 317. So whatever the heck 317 from 245 is. and you know, I'm the, looking at uh, GIS on Alma right now. Eight one eighty one four hundred was my purchase price. Yeah, that was just a flat out smart move. Flat out smart. But move. dude, the lake the lake appreciated more though. Yeah, but if but you're looking, it appreciated more. But you're saying the rent I could get from a profit standpoint, the rent was more. So uh, if you you've got to look at you know obviously you're going to look at an ROI and find out what your rent is and all that kind of and oh by the way, I'm sure you're capturing. Some income tax benefits oh, no doubt. No from doubt. Oh, from that, 100%. which is which is which is helpful helpful for. I that. also don't have the upkeep of the lake, uh, standalone single family detached home. You don't have the roof repair. You don't have the uh, the the grass cutting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The landscaping. Now you take care of everything inside the villas, but you're not taking care of the yeah. exterior that's bundled into the yeah. HOA. Yeah, and and but you also. Don't have a one third of, a, of an acre lot. Right. You also don't have that. Yeah. But is that as valuable when you're not living there? It certainly was well, it valuable. What you're going to do with it, right? In your case, it worked out perfect. And and again, it's the point I've been trying to make, right? Everybody's different. You know, when we're trying to do these case studies, which I love doing this, right? It's fun uh, and helping folks on it. But everybody's different. You know, Casey's different than. Jerry, um, you know, so forth and so on. The other folks, that their circumstances are different. And what we bring to the table is we have to determine, okay, what's your circumstances and how we can help it. Brittany, right? Okay, Brittany's doing new construction sales for Stanley Martin Homes, right? So what, you know, does that fit into what the buyer is trying to accomplish? Um, Scotty Moe, Scott Morris, if you're watching the program, Mad Moves Mountains with Ross Mortgage. I just tagged you in a post on my Facebook page um, with Gwendolyn, who's looking for a loan for, for some dirt, purchasing some dirt, some land in Greene County. So Scott, my Facebook page, comment section, tag you in a post with Gwendolyn Gale Cassidy, who's looking for some financing for some land in Greene County. You can take it from there, Scotty Mo. So it's interesting. I happened to print out an article, uh, same Inman, same group, same group of folks, written oct October 9th. I printed it out a long time ago thinking this may come up. And what its title is, why is, now why is now still a great time to buy a house? And I'll just, the highlights on it is, 
many home prices are beginning to reduce everywhere. So, so now between October 9th and now, Inman is saying, look, Fannie Mae is saying prices are going to start coming down a little bit. Owning is always better than renting, and it's pretty obvious. We've been talking about that for a while. There's also this tax benefits of, of being a homeowner, too. There's a benefit there because you get to write your, your interest right. off at, at the moment. Um, and again, reading the rest of this article quickly. Um, Why not like Gail Cassidy? Condos have less depreciation versus homes. Yeah. Yes and no, right? You know, it depends on the market. I can tell you. Uh, this is fun. I can tell you that was not the case with uh, uh, Hessian Hills, and that was not the case with. Um, what's the one? We always, I always forget this. What's the one over by the railroad track? Um, Across from uh, oh, Walker Square. Walker Square. Thank you. Yeah, they. they I speak Smith. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a lefty ADD thing. Uh, <laughs> the the that was they, funny. They, I, I'm, I'm, and, and, and apparently lefties and ADD are funny too. Who yeah. knew that? Charming guys, just <laughs> charming, charming guys. Charming. What is it? Cosmopolitan. Apparently, yeah. I'm cosmopolitan too. Two is laughing. Right, right. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you got me a little excited because, you know, I'm riding a 65-mile bike race tomorrow up in Stanton or Staunton, depending on how you say it, uh, to help raise money for food bank on it. And I'm going to carbo load tonight, and I may or may not have a cocktail uh, before I carbo. Oh, you need the cocktail. I will have a cocktail. Um, keep finishing your thought because you were about to drop some knowledge. No, knowledge I, I mean, coming I, on I'm the not feed. dropping knowledge. I'm just repeating what we've been talking about. I'm just, it's just written, it's, it's in articles, right? Refinancing will be an option in, within a, a few few years so that they're talking about, you know, you're buying in now, right? So if I buy a home right now at 317 at Lake Monticello at 7% or whatever we are right now, you know, and you're not going to sell it, Probably in the next two years, you're going to start seeing three percent. Now, I, I, let me. I just going to retract that. Probably five percent, four to five percent, in that range. I may be wrong. Six percent. But if you're renting, if you're buying a three seventeen at say seven percent, and you could pick up two percent, that's the time to refinance. That's kind of been the rule of thumb for a while. And uh, and the last item was, and this is what I'm. This is why my I'm a busy this this next few. Days. More houses are available with less stress, right? There's there there's actually you can actually negotiate. We can actually do what we love, which is negotiate. I love personally love negotiating. It's my thing. That's my little. I love negotiating. That's my little. Um, that's my little. Um, Adrenaline rush. Oh, love it. I love to negotiate. I love to, to help people get uh, get what they want. KTP, Katie Pearl, welcome to the broadcast. Hey, Katie Pearl. Um, comments coming in fast and furious. Jamie Turner, welcome ooh, to the ooh. show. Mayor of Gordonsville, repping the pep and call pepper. Uh, the real estate investor himself. Jamie, I responded to your comment of what I'm doing now um, from an investment standpoint with a link to what we're doing now. That's in the comments section. Brittany Gray has got some fantastic insight. Hey, Brittany. Um, wow, a lot of comments here. Um, the Lake, Lake Monticello hit its appreciation when Village Oaks started its build out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you it, agree with that? I think. If the if the comment is Villa, Village Oaks influenced the appreciation, I'm not so sure that's 100 percent correct. Not that I wish to ever disagree with Brittany on it. I think it was a timing thing, right? It was just when it came online um, versus what was available to buy. But yeah, it, it it helped. New construction always always helps. So let's let's talk about that for a second, right? Because Colonial Circle is about ready to come on. This is going to be a Stanley Martin Homes project. Uh, it's about 200 single-family uh, attached and detached with these are townhomes. And, and, um, Ooh, single, go ahead. Single, new construction always impacts existing, right? It either increases the value, right? It also helps, the, it helps free up market helps free up inventory because they'll find and, and I Village Oaks is a prime example. Village Oaks is adjoining the Lake Monticello. If you take a look at the buyers in there, we've helped several buyers in it, they were lateral moves. Right? They were moved from Lake Monticello to there. For the most part. It wasn't all of it, but there was a huge percentage of it. I'll see the same thing happen. We have this conversation one to two years from now at uh, Colonial Circle, you'll see a large percentage of people, particularly the single family detached units, 
will be moving. They just laterally move uh, from, from that. She says Village Oaks brought a surplus of Charlottesville and out-of-area buyers to the, uh, to the neighborhood. Sure. She also says, and this is a Stanley Martin rep on the feed, dropping knowledge here. She says at Spring Creek in Glenmore, where she's representing new construction in both, um, Stanley Martin is offering a tremendous amount of closing credits right now yeah. just to keep up with interest and price hikes. 15000 if it's closed before 2023. I have never seen this much in our industry, and this is for new construction. Well, we had this conversation. On Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday, yeah. right? Yeah, so you're going to, new construction's the right. Brittany, closing deals in the feed there right here. Go. I like it. There you go. That's because she's a lefty. So the, 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 yeah, so you're going to start seeing that come back. That, that's not, uh, you know, in a time of great unpleasantness, right? And I'm not so sure Brittany was selling new construction at the time. I can assure you they were, the deals were much, you know, the incentives were much higher than, higher than that. But you'll, you'll see that happen. So now is a great time to buy new construction, right? It's a great time to buy it because you can get your, you're not, you're not competing with a lot of folks for the most part, um, depending on where you're at in the process. Uh, you can get to make your own selections, maybe not, depending on where the house is finished at that end of it, or if you're starting off new. But yeah, you're going to see incentives come up. I, I remember not too long ago, you get a finished basement, right? Like a fifty thousand dollar finished basement thrown in if you signed on and by a certain date and a certain certain time. Good question from the mayor of Gordonsville. What happens, Keith, when a new development doesn't sell? There is a Richmond American project in Orange County that is just not moving. With the back to office push, there aren't any DC buyers moving down to Orange County to scoop up the new builds. Yeah. Great question. Um, been there, done that. That, that, that. Lived through that with the time of great unpleasantness and that kind of thing. Um, there's a technical things that'll go on. It depends on if they're financing it or if they're using cash. Uh, to go ahead and do the development. Most likely they're financing it. Uh, it, it, it. You know, one of the biggest struggles when we used to develop new projects and come in, and so the stuff that I did was mostly semi-custom and custom, so they were not a production. We, we never did production stuff, frankly, on that end of it. The first sales were always the hard sales because nobody wanted to be stuck in a In a construction zone. No, not that. Yes, there's always that. Or an uncertain future of a project. They don't want to be the first one in and the project not completed and right. they're the only one in it, right? And Like phase one, Vils at Southern Ridge, Jerry Miller. Yeah, on that end of it. Um, sit tight. The where matters. I don't know where this project is, right? Um, did you say Orange County? Orange County. Orange yeah. County. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not an expert in Orange County by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but my suspicion is it's probably at the end of the rubber band. Remember we were having this conversation when the O shift happened, right? The rubber band this time last year was super stretched out and it didn't matter where you were. That rubber band in our marketplace is kind of now pear shaped. It's kind of wrapping around Albemarle County, Gordonsville, Fulvan and Nelson and then poking its, and Green County and poking Louisa and poking its way up into the other side of the mountain, kind of looking like a, like a pear on the end of it with the top of the pair being, you know, Waynesboro and Augusta County. If you're outside of that rubber band, it's gonna be difficult, I think. From Jamie says the sales office, I mean, look at Jamie Turner hunt for deal. Dude, I like Jamie Turner's hustle and chutzpah. He says- I'm really curious on, on, on when, when he's done with that, what, what he ended up doing or thinking of doing with his Gordonsville property, but we're running out of time here. We still got. I'm, I'm okay. enjoying this tremendously. Yeah, cool. I'm good. I'm, I yeah. don't. I don't. Uh, my first meeting is one o'clock. So. He says the sales office at this particular new development in Orange County. They say the all the previous buyers were DC and Nova buyers and walked. Now it's completely crickets. Yeah, yeah. So my suspicion. So so it could be. It's interesting. I had this conversation with somebody else about our dear county, Nelson County, uh, on it, and 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 it was a professional in, in the trades in my industry, uh, are they starting to see, you know, this hybrid, which we've been predicting long in the middle of the pandemic, that it'd be more of a, of a half virtual, half in, depending on the job, of course, half virtual, half in person. And, and we're starting to see that. I can tell you on all the boards and commissions I sit on, which is becoming a problem, 
we're all back in person. You yeah. were one last night. I was in person. Right, right, yeah. on, on that end of it and, it, and it, and it's impactful on how you can do. Again, support Neil Williamson. Neil Williamson, President of Free Enterprise Forum. Oh, that's because he'll attend all these virtually or in, in person. So I, my suspicion is, is the rubber bands pulled back, rubber band pulled back here, rubber band pulled back in the DC. They probably, again, I don't know this, I'm just guessing at this point, they probably had contracts that fell apart in mid-builds. Been there, done that very, very much, by the way. I had several three quarters of a million dollar houses built with, with buyers out of California that walked. Never showed up for closing. Gordonsville House Update, Jamie Turner. Yeah, yeah, cool. Called a few demo companies to get quotes on the Gordonsville properties. Going to look at a few modulars down south because it's much cheaper. Yep. Looking at around 15000 to demolition my investment house. Sounds about so right. So I would love to get a controlled burn going for it to save a bit of money. If not, 15000 is fine, I suppose. So I've done great. I've, I, You've done controlled burns. I've done quite a few of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, you know, obviously he's going to reach out to the local fire chief and fire department and go ahead and do that. The control burns I did were in the middle of a field, right? It, but it was great. They love it. Uh, it I think in a, in a more urban, which, you know, city environment, kind of what Gordonsville is, that may, they, may not, they may have an issue with that. Um, 15 grand is a good number for demo in that, by the Kevin way. Kevin Yancey says, Jamie Turner, here's a tip. Offer the house to the fire department for training purposes. Well, that, that's, that's, we're saying the same that's thing. That's the control burn? We're, that's the control burn. We're okay. saying all the same thing. You reach out to the fire department and say, look, we're going to go ahead and do that. They set it up. They burn it. They, they, they train folks to go in and out. I've, I've done that about a dozen times. How much does that cost? It do not cost anything. They do it free? Yeah, they just show up and burn it. That's amazing. Yeah, they show up and burn it. Isn't they that the way to go? It is. Did you know that, Judah? I didn't know that. Yeah. I just learned a second thing today. Yeah, yeah. but it, the, again, the where matters, right? Because you're saying a controlled burn in a neighborhood is a little more dangerous. Yeah, yeah. So we, you know, we, this was a develop, development. There was a always have some old structures on them or homes on them. You clear a 150 foot radius around it. On that, there's trucks there. I mean, it's just it's very uh, methodical and safe. If you're in an area where there's, um, you know, you're doing this building and an ember pops out and starts a house next door, that's not a good thing. Controlled burns. Second thing I learned today. Free controlled burns. Asbestos. Keep Neil Williams had put asbestos question mark in the feed. Yeah. Said referring to the controlled burn. Yeah. So you have to go through the building, right? You have to make sure there's no asbestos in it. If there is, you have to abate it. So you can't do a controlled burn if there's asbestos. No, you have to abate it. You have to remove the asbestos. Before the control burn. And that costs money. Okay. So what happens? You look at the building, you go through it, your engineers are gone through the everything anyway, right? And if there's no asbestos, then, then, uh, then it's good. But if there's asbestos, you've got to remove it. Reminds me of a story. In, did I ever tell you the story in Cape no. Charles? Yeah. It's um, had a uh, two, 2006, 2007... I was doing some development down there and I put a contract in on a medical facility that was sitting on four non-conforming lots. In other words, it was built in 1948 or 49. And I knew that there was a development going next door and the entrance was going through it. So I wanted to buy it, demo, demolish it and build four houses. That was the game plan. So you have to, to Neil's point, uh, before you demo it, you have to do your environmental studies, right? So I had a company come in and do it. Um, they actually sprayed on asbestos. You know those popcorn things you ever see on the ceiling? Oh, yeah. It was all asbestos. I bought it for 300000 Um Had a company come in and do it, yada, yada, yada. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get myself into trouble here. So the, I probably will, actually. So, um, so anyway. This lives on the internet forever. Yeah, I know that. And I don't care. I've told this story okay. before, so... But anyway, make a long story short, it was $300,000 just to remove the asbestos. So the person who helped me buy it never disclosed it, that there was asbestos in it. So I went back to the person who helped me buy it, and I said, look, here's the report. And the answer was, is, well, we've got a bunch of magnet workers around here. We can go ahead and get them to tear it out. And I said, no, you're not. Oh, my gosh. So what's your solution? So, so anyway, make a long story short, this was crazy. She went and enlisted it, uh, sold it to a guy out in Northern Virginia, 
uh, they wanted to develop it, handed, had, said, I'm having lunch with the guy, handed the report to him, and I said, look, I had it on the market for 600,000, um, and I said, here's the report, you know, I want you to know what you're buying before you bought it, I'm disclosing all this stuff, and the guy's, will you take 500,000? I said, yep, and we sold it, and the son of a bitch went and got millennial, uh, went to got migrants to take it out, which I, I hate telling the story, but, um, you know, there's some unscrupulous people out there. No doubt. And uh, they, went and, they, went and, they went and did it. And, and if you don't think I dropped a dime, you would be wrong. You dropped a dime? Oh, shit. Did anything happen? Sure you did. What happened? He got fined. You got fined? What's the fine? I, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But he Ballpark. Got fined. Like, it was tens and tens. It was a lot of money. I it's a lot of money? It. Okay. That's I what I was wondering. Is it a lot or a little bit? It wasn't $5,000. It, okay. was, it was substantial. Substantial. I dropped a dime on him. Pissed me off. As it should. As it undoubtedly Drop should. The uh, or a quarter, whatever we're calling it. Dropped, I know that was a bit of a bummer story. Now it's uh, dropped a silver dollar. No, it's just called, use your phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a saying. Um, Kevin, yeah, so it, it, Kevin it, wants us to do this. And Kevin, why don't we do this? We'll save this for Monday. Here's a Monday comment for you. Our question, our topic for you. Um, Kevin Yancey wants us to discuss that the banks, and he's, JP Morgan is... A good example of this. I'll tell you the J.P. Morgan story in a moment. Just for the sake of time, we'll save this for Monday. Kevin Yancey, King of Waynesboro. He says, "Does the banks do the banks hoarding cash to insulate against foreclosure spikes worry either of you?" And he's referencing um, a report that hit the news cycle today. Obviously, Kevin Yancey is a well-read man. Kevin, I you follow the news very closely. I have noticed that with the comments that you do, you are well-read. J.P. Morgan. Let me see if I can find it. Jamie so the, Dimon. So the bottom line question is, are they? Yeah, because... No, I, I, the, the, it's, a, it's a startling number, and we, and we do have to go because we got our guests coming in soon. It's oh, Mr. Oh. Bill, Judah, today on the show. Mr. Bill. Oh, no, Mr. Amaral Bill. Oh. Um, <laughs> let's see. It's, uh, he's the guy who wrote the letter to the school board. Oh, really? That retired. I'm, I'm just doing an old Saturday Night Live skit. Memory, memory. J.P. Morgan is sitting on like trillions. Of, yeah, yeah, a ton of cash. Trillions of dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trillions of and dollars. The, and the and the premise of this is they're going to use that to to, to buy back yeah, there. Yancey, Yancey, and it's not just Yancey. Other folks are saying this as well. Banks hoarding cash to insulate against foreclosure spikes. Does that worry you guys? Yeah. So the. the I, the short answer to that, and, and we can surely tackle it on Monday, I do, at the moment, as long as there is equity climbing the way we've been looking at it, on that end of it, that you will not see a foreclosure spike. There'll, there's an increase in foreclosures, that's for sure. But you're not going to see, like in 2010, there was 3 million foreclosures or some number very close to that. On that. You're, you're looking at 30,000, 40,000 nationwide that are either in the foreclosure process now or have been recently foreclosed on it. So it's not going to be that. What they're stacking that cash up on is uh, to put buybacks. But again, what they're going to do, if anybody is at, and I, I can't say this any clearer, if anybody feels like they can't make their payment, make a phone call to somebody. Immediately. Before you hit 31 days past due. Because after that, you start losing control very rapidly. Prior to that, you are in control. And you can say, look, you know, reach out to the banks, reach out to your loan servicer on that stuff, reach out to uh, Bill Tucker, who has a short sale and foreclosure department on that. Love kind you, of Bill thing, Tucker. That kind of thing. So they can start communicating with the banks, but start talking at that point. Because once you reach this 31 days and once it starts going through that, um, it, it gets on autom and the state of Virginia becomes very automatic. Trust me. I know. Yeah, and the banks guys have reason to expedite the foreclosure process now because the real estate market is still somewhat hot, so they know that they can. Well, they don't want to. They don't want to foreclose. They want to resolve before that. Because before they want to get it off their balance sheet. They want to get off their balance yeah. sheet. They don't want to own the property, and they know that they can sell the houses now. This is different than 08, 09, and 10, where the houses did not move. Well, the point of the, the, the I think the question of the concern about the dollar is because. As every, anybody who understands this thing, they got to buy back their own asset. Right. 
and not only that, to buy back their own asset, they cost them money. It's about fifty thousand on a residential transaction, about fifty thousand dollars plus or minus. So they're buying it back, whatever, three hundred thousand plus fifty thousand plus it's on the effing books. Plus, they got to have somebody to effing take care of it. So, tr so they really are motivated. I'm sorry. F and A, yeah, F and B, B, F and C. That's what I was thinking about too. <laughs> this was a, a joke, off-color joke I told before we went live, was... which we will not tell on live. Um, Nicholas, it... Nicholas, and Brittany trying to close some deals in the comments. Nicholas Murphy, the CMO of Emergent Financial Services, said, "I've seen my father change people's lives with one piece of advice. So talk to your financial advisor or find one. Sometimes little changes can have a big financial impact." Brittany Gray. Oh my gosh, please call me. I went through hell, but I did keep my home in one of the worst markets to do so. Gwendolyn Gale Cassidy in Italy. This has been a wonderful show as always. So great to see you guys again. Unfortunately, I have to get back to work. But work. This has been wonderful staying informed of Seville news and domestic news. She is in Italy. Look at um, you, almost six o'clock at night. Unbelievable. Worldwide. Um, great show. As always, it's a great Today show. Today was fun. Uh, uh, I came yeah. in with no plan. Uh, literally just a, an article and an Inman article was the and plan we, and we are uh, well, one of the longest we've done yeah man look at that thank you for your time yeah, was fun. Judah thank you for uh, just being awesome was God no I'm sorry God thank you for the voice of God yeah you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Bill on the I Love Seville show on Friday or today at 1230 Mr. Bill Mankachi there we go the did you get the oh, oh no, Mr. Bill reference from Saturday oh, yeah. Night Live? Yeah. yeah, he made that. You made that reference, didn't you? Uh, okay. Did one of the viewers? I think okay. one of the viewers. You got to go. We you, you got a show to do. I do. We do have a show to go. Puts a lot thank of pressure you guys. on you. Thank, yeah, it does. It does. Um, all right, thank you guys. Oh God. Real talk with KeithSmith.com. All the shows archived there. The show is presented by Yes Realty Partners, Keith Smith and Jonas Smith's company, Yes Realty Partners. A division of Keller Williams Alliance? Partners. A partners. partner partners. Keller Williams Alliance. Thank you kindly for joining us. Do not miss the I Love Seville show in 39 minutes. So long, everybody. Take care. I wonder why his fingers are flying over there. Great show. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is fun. I got, you know.